Well, it was only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. Years and years have passed since I have created any anti-SJW content. And I, I don't think that I'm actually doing that here either. But it's kind of funny because this video is awful. It's very awful. And uh, I do want to comment on it because I think it's important to do so. But uh, it, it's, it's fascinating to me because I don't really feel like I have necessarily changed very much in my convictions. I've just changed in my priorities uh, from all the way back in the day. I don't comment a lot on lefty creators because usually I think that they're like doing good. Even if maybe I have some issues with it. I, I usually don't comment because I think overall that they are doing good. I do not feel that way about Thought Slime. I've never felt that way about Thought Slime. Um, when Mildred was uh, much smaller, I, I really disliked the fact that there was a, an ad every two minutes on their, uh, their video. And I, I, it just it didn't feel very genuine. Now as Mildred is much more genuine, uh, and really speaking from the chest... I really dislike it. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, I guess uh, we're, we're, we're dipping back in. We're going to be an enlightened, centrist, skeptic, uh, filthy fence-sitter uh, for, for this one shot. This is a very long video. Um, we'll see, we'll see uh, what our thoughts are as we watch this. So, let's get started. Hooters! Uh, Hooters! The word means many things to many people, to some owls, to others the human boob, that which sits upon our chest and nourishes our young cum. Thirst. To yet others, it means a chain of shitty restaurants where the wait uh. staff must be attractive young women forced to wear demeaning little shorts and endure what must be the least convincing sexual proposals anyone has ever received. Mm, yeah, I look the the. Selling oneself's body, as long as it's completely informed and, you know, it, it, somebody chooses to do so knowing what they're getting into, that's about personal choice. However, to, like, it, arguing about Hooters is kind of an archaic thing at this point um, because there, there should be protections put into place where if you are dealing with undue workplace harassment, there should be plenty of opportunities for you to not have to endure that and instead be awarded financial compensation. But on the very basic concept of somebody uh, utilizing their attractiveness for labor, I'm not going to be mad about it. Think of it like a strip club, <laughs> but like for dudes that are heterosexual, but terrified of the sight of a naked woman. I don't think that that is even remotely true. That what? I, no, no. You go to Hooters uh, for terrible wings, and because some coworker was like, I love going to Hooters, seeing all them hot babes. <laughs> I, like, equating it to a strip club is not the same, because a strip club, you are being sold a fantasy. That, that is how sex workers work. That's how strippers work. Um, they uh, intrigue and they work like they work you uh, to try and extract your money uh, through this fantasy. Hooters is just a a visual. I don't know, uh, a, a a visual entertainment thing. You know, like it's not the same. It's really not the same. Also, probably the tips are worse. But to Nick Adams, parentheses, alpha male, it means something very different. Dining at Hooters is a cornerstone of the American male experience. Never eaten at Hooters. Also, trying to cite Nick Adams on anything, I'm pretty sure that guy is a troll. I think he's, he's Poe. I really do. Uh, nobody unironically tweets like Nick Adams. It's bait, and it's very effective bait. He gets so much engagement, it is ridiculous. When the woke feminists and beta males attack Hooters, they aren't just attacking a restaurant that employs beautiful women to serve cold beer and hot wings. They're attacking the essence of American manhood. Okay, this is what you do when you see a tweet like this. You make a tweet and you laugh about it and then you move on. 
That's it. Because none of this is serious. And it's like, <laughs> this is not really a platform that anybody really cares about. Not really. That's right. This video is about some internet dingus. That's the framing device for this one. Because I got nothing better to do, baby. Mm. A video that's sort of about Nick Adams and Hooters, but is more so about the ways that performative masculinity can be prescriptive and restricting. And that is what we really are watching this video for. It's just my Uber Eats guy. Hooters stayed bussin' through the Iraq war and Barack Hussein Obama's recession. If 9-11 couldn't bring Hooters down, there's not a chance in hell Joe Biden can. No cap. Alpha males stan Hooters. Yeah, I don't know how you can take that serious. 9-11 couldn't bring Hooters down? What? Why would Joe Biden care? What? It means freedom. It means power. It means manhood. Freedom is when people are forced to pretend to be nice to you. Power is the ability to pay $21.99 for a platter of chicken wings so flavorless that, as far as I can tell from their busted-ass website, which is so fucking busted because no one under 50 is ever going to go to this fucking restaurant, they don't, they don't even seem to offer a spicy option. Manhood is when women find you so repulsive that the only way you can get their attention is by going somewhere they're paid to pretend like they're sexually available to you. This is, I mean, look, if you're gonna get mad at Nick Adams for making up, like, really wild, ridiculous stuff, going the exact, like, other end of it can be funny, but this isn't funny. And also, yeah, that looks absolutely disgusting. Nick Adams is dumb. He's, he's, and I, I, I'm telling you, Nick Adams is a troll. It is not serious. It has never been serious. The left hates this. Don't worry. The beer is Sam Adams lager, and the wings are hot buffalo. G'day, guys. Nick Adams here. As all of you know, Hooters has been trending all day today. Yeah, that's right. He's Australian. Bet you didn't see that coming. That, what a mildly surprising twist that is. Hooters is one of the finest establishments and restaurant chains in the entire United States of America. This dude is not, he's not serious. I, like, I, I, I don't know, man. I feel like using Nick Adams as a framing device for what you want to talk about is like using Borat, you know? On top of that, it is a cornerstone of American male education. The food is good, the drinks are good, the view is good. The left will not defeat the great Hooters. <laughs> Nick Adams has always looked like a scuffed James Corden to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the left, like, this idea of the left wanting to defeat Hooters and be against, like, sexuality is pretty ridiculous, you know? It, it's it's very not even remotely true or close to reality. It, it's so dumb. There is nothing better than Hooters. It will come as perhaps no surprise that I do not share Mr. Adams parentheses alpha male's view of the Hooters chain of restaurants. Neither do I. Though I will admit... I've only ever been inside one once when I performed at a comedy club that was also a Hooters in a KFC Taco Bell kind of situation. I remember the waiter coming up to me and asking me if I wanted a drink, and I couldn't look her in the eye because I kept feeling like, oh, I did this. This is my fault. I, I made this happen. I didn't create Hooters, but I didn't do anything to stop it. Why would you want to stop Hooters? The, like, I again, I don't understand why why there has to be this like like why why would anybody either on the right or the left want to maintain some establishment of like purity from people being able to use their bodies for their own labor you know like it, it, they, if you're making an example of hooters is like a strip club which it's not but even if if you were are you against people stripping cuz i'm not as long as people aren't being exploited and they're paid a fair wage and they know exactly what they're getting into, why, why, why would anybody care? It's very strange to me. I, I don't get it. Also, let's not have comments about Thought Slime's appearance. Personally, I think he, he looks more uh, like uh, Till from Rammstein, uh, just in this aesthetic a little bit, which is an improvement over the 
the facial hair that uh, that they used to. I don't know. I, I think I thought slimes pronouns are like any or all, so I could say whatever, and it's not a big deal. So I'll just try and say they. Uh, they their uh, former foray into facial hair. Mm -mm. This is an improvement, and I have no problem with it, so I don't care. Alpha males watch football at Hooters and play 36 holes of golf with the boys. Beta males play nine holes with their wives and go to Chili's for the two for 20 deal. Yeah, how, this is, it's just stupid. Do I want to do a two for 20 deal with you at Chili's? Absolutely not. An alpha male's choice in food can never be constricted for the sake of savings. I'll order what I want because I'm an alpha male. Two for 20 is beta. But of course I feel that way, bitter beta male pseudo-feminist leftist soy cuck that I am, I resent the sheer masculine energy of the institution. That particular manliness that is best summed up by those little belt clips for your cell phone, you know the ones. You what's wrong with that? I don't understand, why, what's wrong with that? Like, why, I, I don't understand why, why that's a dig. Like, like people like, some people like to wear utility belts and stuff. I wear a, like a, a thigh uh, pouch thing to carry all sorts of stuff on it. Like, who cares? I, it's weird. Your dad probably has one. It's a place for the type of manly man who buys his polo shirts at Costco because Old Navy is a little bit too gay for them. I simply don't have the alpha big dick energy to need a special restaurant where women pretend to like me. Hey, hey, everybody. I know, I know, I okay, I know, I know what he's doing. I'm playing into his extremely obvious media strategy by right. giving him any attention at all. Right. It is not a sophisticated plan that went over my head. It's very clear that he's deliberately being provocative sure. so that people will call him a dipshit. The metric system is socialist and must be wholly rejected in the USA. Right. China, North Korea, and Canada, some of the most despotic and oppressive nations on earth use the metric system. I get it, I've, I, I've, I know. America needs more churches and less Fortnite stores. Tear down the Fortnite stores and open up more churches. The whole point is to take a completely arbitrary stand, usually with some catchy, attention-grabbing, dumb aspect to it, like claiming that Hooters existed before feminism and soy milk, and then wait for someone to make fun of him so he can talk about how he triggered all the libs and he doesn't care who he offends. Very cool, very novel. Everybody's super impressed with your Machiavellian genius. Okay, so then why do it? And in the process of doing it, why then espouse some really strange opinions? I do not understand what exactly the purpose of this is if you are fully self-aware of what you're doing. If wind turbines were murdering puppies and kittens at the same rate they murder whales and bald eagles, we'd have eradicated wind turbines from the face of the earth by now. Because it would be ridiculous. How would the wind turbines kill whales, right? And everybody's going to be like, hey man, what, what a silly mistake you made. And then he gets all sorts of engagement. What a genius. Force him with the boys. It, it is kind of genius. That's how Twitter works. That's how engagement works. Domestic beer in the cart. Ladies away at their par three. They hate this. Do you get it? Because he called it a foursome, right? And he he doesn't get that that makes it sound like they're all having sex together. And then everybody's going to say, hey, did you know what that sounds like? And he's going to get so much engagement. What a genius strategy. Yes. Alpha male challenge. I, like, how long are we just going to be going through and listening to, like, reading Nick Adams' tweets? Are we still doing this? Are we still doing this? Okay, come on. Yeah, because I, I don't want to be sitting here for the next, like, five minutes or however long. An alpha male? They hate this. I'm here to tell you, it does not matter. We don't need to react for them to pursue this strategy anymore. They just live in their own little world where they say things and then pretend like we got mad even if we didn't. Yeah, I would say, right. So then, okay. <sighs> Dear environmentalist liberals. You can take my gas stove out of my cold, dead hands. So the g he's just having a laugh. No, I agree, and like that's fine. But I do know what else is in this video. I know, I know where this video goes, um, and that's why I'm still questioning how exactly we're using this as a framing device, and why I'm 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 making it clear that like. This this whole entire thing is very self-defeating. Like, you're consciously aware that you're helping the engagement of somebody that you find detestable and that they're really good at doing that thing and then you're just 
doing that thing, right? Like it's just it's weird. It's very weird. It just it's there's no there's no doing anything about it. Just let's just have some fun. I have an IQ of Yeah, and if this is just a video where you're just laughing at Nick Adams being dumb, I would totally support it. Totally support it. Like, yeah. Yeah, dude. It's fun. It's funny content. 184 and I will not be shamed for it. I believe men become this particular flavor of internet misogynist because they feel weak and emasculated and blaming women is easier than self-reflection. No, wait, wait, wait. So is this for engagement? Is this not serious, but it's for engagement so he can improve? Or is it because he is weak uh, and has male fragility? It allows them to, in their minds at least, save face and not have to admit out loud that they feel shame about not living up to the nonsense version of manhood they've been conditioned to believe they should strive towards. They aren't capable violence doers, or they can't get laid, or maybe they can't get a decent job, and they've been taught that those three things in particular are what defines their success as a man. But also they've been taught that expressing it... And if that is something that they're taught, which I, I do not think is as prevalent as you might, you might think, nor does society necessarily uh, agree to or encourage that thing. It has to be pretty insular little communities where that sort of thing happens. Like, is, isn't, if that is the thing, isn't that a bad thing? Aren't they kind of like a victim of those types of harmful tropes? I'm just, I'm just saying, like... Any discomfort with this criteria, or any strong emotions in general, or needing any help, makes you a weak little bitch boy. Times it is acceptable for alpha males to cry. The birth of your first child, your first hole-in-one, the national anthem, any occasion. Crying, acceptable at funerals and the Grand Canyon. Ron Swanson is an alpha male. Inevitably, when the real world doesn't match their ridiculous expectations, it makes them feel like they're not good enough. Okay. And since they're forbidden from trying to change anything, feeling any pain because of it, or asking for help, it creates this tension that can only be resolved by either A, growing up and letting go of the bad ideas about what it means to be a man that ding-dongs have taught them, accepting okay. that it's okay to need some help sometimes, because fucking everybody does, and that your material success and sick martial arts moves and body count are not what makes you a man, but rather, manhood should instead be thought of as more or less just adulthood for boys. Or B... I'm okay with that in, in a broad context, sure, sure. Um, it, you could also say kids are dumb, <laughs> <coughs> and there are some really dumb things that young boys end up uh, believing in, and there are definitely reasons for that, and we're about to start talking about it. Um, but yeah, maturing and, and just like being immersed in the real world is probably the most effective way of, and I don't know if it's reclaiming manhood, but like bouncing back from that sort of thing. If that's too hard... Find someone else to blame so that they can continue to feel strong while not getting the things they think strong men should have. And and you know what? You, hey, you know who's not men? That's very reductive, but let's let's just let it go and keep going. Women? Alpha males don't just prefer the company of other alpha males. They require it. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Proverbs 2717, alpha male bonding is biblical. I don't know. That's how it seems to me anyway. I could be wrong, and it's possible I'm being too charitable towards weird, gross dudes here. I I think you're uh, kind of brushing it all off in a, in, a, in a large cartoonish stroke, honestly. It's worth pointing out that I myself am more man than woman, for now. So I'm sure I have all kinds of weird little hidden biases and my own little subconscious sexisms that I too must work on. I'm not an expert here. This is just how it looks like to me. Okay. My point is that if they're using these ideas and cultural symbols to feel strong, powerful, and cool, you know, like the type of person who goes to Hooters, the sillier you make them look, the less likely they are to be able to do that again. Okay, but the thing is, everybody uses those types of like cultural symbols and tropes and whatever everybody uses those types of things to feel powerful they don't have to there's lots of ways people like to feel powerful there are plenty um and you know it's people naturally have weaknesses everybody does everybody has their weak points their achilles heel probably many and how they choose to respond to that and uh, either protect against that being, um, 
wounded or how they 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 try and mitigate the damage of that uh, that weakness or how they they fool themselves into being stronger than those weaknesses because it's too much for them to be able to like you know address it head on um pointing that out in an abrasive and cruel manner is not helpful it, it it's it's not and especially if you broadly and make a cartoon out of you know these people's weaknesses um you, you're really not going to be converting them to to addressing the fact that they might have a weakness you know it's weird although it does seem like the threshold for how silly they have to look before realizing they're being dinguses is higher than we might expect the latest issue of the joker the man who stopped laughing comic book features a scene where the joker a man becomes pregnant. That's not how that works. I'm calling for a complete and total boycott of the Joker until further notice. I drink my coffee black. I eat my steaks rare and seafood raw. I like my beer domestic. I sit with my legs spread wide open. We get I am it. an alpha male and no, I won't apologize for it. If you have to say you're an alpha male, <laughs> you aren't an alpha male. I started my day with four raw eggs, yeah, yeah, an 18 yeah. okay, ounce, okay. medium rare. Again, the thing is, if you're arguing against the cartoonishness of men and the, of this cartoon that you've made of alpha men and insecure men, but you're basing it off of somebody who is obviously and ridiculously being a cartoon about it, you are doing disservice to your argument. God damn, how many fucking tweets do we have to watch before you start just talking? Video. Uh, the, a question kind of made the rounds on on, uh, on on leftist internet. Here we go. There the we question go. of whether or not the hashtag online left is enough to appeal to hashtag men has become the question du jour. And like, that's, that's, that's a very misguided question, in my opinion. Okay. Broadly speaking, the goal of the left should be to spread power to the most people possible. And so it should always be kind of harder to get people who already have unfair amounts of power on board. Um, okay. <clears throat> in my perspective, uh, I like to equate leftism with progressivism. Progressivism at its core is improving the human condition because ultimately, as much as I am lefty, uh, I am a futurist. I am a speciest. I am more concerned with making sure that our species survives. And then secondary to that is improving the material conditions for every single person on the planet. Um, the, the notion of like trying to increase power for everyone is going to require people that already have power give up that power it should not necessarily be a just broad sweeping that is what it is it might be a requirement in some instances perhaps maybe um but in many regards it doesn't have to be it depends on what we're talking about if we're talking about like wealth resources yeah probably you know people who have all of it uh, are going to need to share. But if we're talking about other things, then it might be different. So let's let's go. That's inconvenient, but it's also kind of unavoidable without diluting the goals we seek to achieve. It is never in the self-interest of the powerful to aid the powerless. That's the reason there are powerful and powerless people in the first place. Well, okay. But isn't there ways to convince the powerful to aid the powerless? Uh, like, right, right. Our species, our species is communal species at its core. True, but we always have this bouncing back and forth between uh, the the notion of mutualism, which I really appreciate your comments in the chat. I do. Um, the notion of mutualism, which is one of the more powerful aspects of human society, versus the very real and strong, and I would say even more rooted in animalistic uh, tendencies than it is with higher functioning uh, humanity of greed. So that balancing act is really where things kind of get messy. You can, given the right kind of circumstances, appeal to somebody's greater nature, um, but it is more powerful if you can find a way to convince somebody that they benefit as well if they try and help others. 
Like, I, you know, if you can convince somebody who has immense wealth that if they want a better future for their children and their descendants and their inheritors of that wealth, uh, to not have, you know, burning wildfires destroying, like, a third of America, rising, you know, waterfront property, destroy... Like, if, like if the planet's going to get wrecked and you can convince them to use their money, that improves everybody. Like, there are ways to do that. Maybe not in every instance, but, like, you know. And men, by and large, are more powerful than women. There are, of course, exceptions. There are intersections of other forms of oppression that can make individual people's stories different than the general trend. But, sure. like, men have most of the money, authority, and do most of the murdering and assaulting, often, to not men. Okay. And... Sure. Yeah, I mean, statistically speaking, yeah, that's that's true. Sure, um, but like in in noticing and understanding that, and also be it'd be weird if you want to increase the murder rate of of, of women murderers. Like uh, that's just that's just me being a joke. That's a little bit of the twenty sixteen slipping out there. Oh, you want to get more women murderers? Equality? No, 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 no. Altruism, not mutualism. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Um, but the other thing that's kind of fascinating about it is if, if they have, uh, a lot of power, uh, is the argument that they need to share or is the argument that it, they have to be taken and then given to others? Because when you're talking about societal power, when you're talking about, uh, you know, positions, things like that. It's a lot harder to make that argument versus resources and wealth. A lot harder. In virtually any circumstance where a man has a shitty time in life, if that man were a woman, they would be having a worse time. Because they'd have all of their regular problems plus some new woman problems. Uh, that's, that's demonstrably incorrect. There are very uniquely to men problems, and very often they do not get a lot of the attention that they need. Do I think that that's... Uh, equitable like on any level of of equation you know the to to the the opposite no i don't i i i don't think so um but it but it's it's not because i don't think that they match up it's because i think that trying to match those things up like women have to deal with this problem and men have to deal with that problem does that uh, equal up i think the process of trying to like compare those two things is gross and does like a disgusting disservice to both things. Like, I don't think you should be assigning, like, a value, like a number value. Like, you know, uh, women's sexual harassment in the workplace and not getting as many high-level jobs. Boom. That We're going to give that an eight. Men's suicide rate, uh, we'll give that only a six. Whether that's that would even be true, if you could even craft an objective metric by which to label these things... The very act of trying to label them would be hideous and inhuman. So I, I just, uh, uh, you know what I mean? It's just, it's weird. Pointing out that this is unfair is always going to ruffle some feathers. It's going to make some men very mad because they like having all of the stuff they don't deserve. They don't care. They like that. They H who and which? Because, again, it's one of those things that always pissed me off about, like, back in 2016 and a lot of the... the the very, very uh, uh, abrasive um, and <laughs> aggressive content uh, coming out of left spaces back then was this notion that you can just broad with a paintbrush, you know, big, big, wide paintbrush, men, men with all of this stuff. And, you know, I, like when, when speaking in broad terms, it's better to do it with some degree of finesse rather than just abrasively say that, because what this tells somebody who does not have a lot of societal power, maybe they're poor, maybe they grew up in a broken home, maybe uh, they've just had a really hard life, they hear something like that, and they're like, well, what, what, what do I have? Like, sure, I mean, maybe I don't have to deal with that, or deal with that, or deal with that, but, like, my life isn't great, and now uh, you're just being a jerk to me. And that's why I don't think it's helpful, you know, having conversations like this. They, they want it to stay that way because it suits them because of the stuff. So those guys, 
they're never going to be on our side. We shouldn't want them to be on our side because they're just going to fuck everything up, right? Like, our side is meant to, to stop those guys. It's like... No. No. See, you just want to, like, exclude... Exclude dudes. Like, I mean, because there's not, there's not really any... Like, there's no real, like, determinant subset that you're really laying out here uh, other than, like, men. And men that have stuff, but not, like, only men that have stuff, but men have all this stuff, so we just don't want to attract them. We don't need them on our side, which is also gross. It is... Mm, mm, mm. It's very, it's very narrow-minded. Like saying we should be trying to appeal to billionaires to fund the left, that yes. might be convenient, but yes. to get them on board, we'd have to fundamentally change our goals. No, no. It would be great if billionaires were invested in leftist ideas and then were willing to fund it. That'd be awesome. If they're not, then they're not going to fund them. Like, like... <laughs> It's so weird. It's so weird. Uh, person who has the ability to make change. We want you to make change. Uh, okay, we. I will make change. Oh, but wait, you are rich, so now we don't actually want you to make change. So we just won't accomplish anything. And yeah, you know, if like there's a billionaire who's like, you know, uh, wanting to embrace some of this stuff, but they're, you know, they're 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 uh, overall arcing effect on the world is going to hurt the world more than it will help by engaging in it, then obviously you don't want anything to do with it. Billionaires aren't going to be invested in leftist goals or class enemies. Why would they help make change that divest them from their wealth and power? Depends on the billionaire. And it depends on like what they're choosing to do with it. There are billionaires out there that do improve the material and human conditions on the planet. They also still uh, make, like, you can say that they're class enemies, but again, it comes down to, like, how I'm saying my priorities. I am a speciesist. I am about the species uh, more so that, like, that's number one. Number two is improve everything. So if a billionaire is overwhelmingly doing some sort of good that will keep everybody alive, uh, I am less likely to be as pissed about them uh, because of, like, class issues. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know. Which ones? You're going to hate me for saying it. I, I, will, I will make both the right and the left bad by saying this, but Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a bad person because he's buying up as much farmland as possible and making almost a monopoly uh, in this country. Uh, he's also done horrible, horrible, horrible things in his past. He also uh, is improving the, uh, the, the vaccines in Africa. He's eliminated certain parasitic uh, worms species. Like, there are things that he's done that are good. Um, Warren Buffett has done some good stuff. Is Warren Buffett still a great guy? No, not really. But, you know, like, it, it's one of those things. Yeah, microchips. So if we want to achieve those goals we have to be okay with alienating certain groups of people. Just pausing here, because I don't think I did a great job of clarifying this point. I am Okay, I really want to hear this. I'm not saying that dudes are unreachable. I'm saying that there are a portion of dudes who are unreachable. They're a small minority, but my point is that because most dudes are reachable and can be made to understand that actually sexism is bad, we therefore don't need to mollycoddle those who are too sensitive to hear that. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if you... If you are not talking about all men, and you instead are talking about a small subset of men, but in your video, before you edit it, and largely run, run with for almost 15 minutes at this point, talking about men in broad strokes, and then you put this caveat, well, not all. Hashtag not all. It's just a small little uh, bit. You have done more damage to your leftist ideals by alienating half the planet. 
Like, I, I don't know why it's so hard to understand that you need to have finesse when you talk about these issues, because if you do not, you hurt what you're trying to do. This isn't difficult. This is so incredibly simple. And, like, okay, so, uh, like, many men, you can just tell them that sexism is bad. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. The thing, the thing, the, okay, the catch is, the catch is not to tell somebody sexism is bad because everybody knows it. The catch is, this is why you should care that sexism is bad. And to do that, you have to use guile. You have to use empathy. Uh, and if you're not comfortable using that amount of energy to try and do so, that's okay. Don't make it worse. Because this video makes it worse. It just is what it is. Because chances are, if you don't like hearing that sexism is... The argument is not that men with little power do not exist. I never said it was. The argument is that a woman in the exact same position would, in current society, be worse off, and that is demonstrably correct. In the exact same position? Yes, I would agree. It's not an indictment of men, but rather an indictment of inequality. I agree. The fact that someone is a man inescapably affords them that advantage in every equal situation. Uh, that I disagree. You're misinterpreting what is being said. I don't think so. I really don't think I'm misinterpreting what is being said. I don't think so. Um, I think that there is 100% cases uh, that there are plenty, there are definitely cases where a man's advantages uh, might still be outweighed by the disadvantages depending on the material conditions that he finds himself in and the situation that he finds himself in. There is plenty of, of scenarios that I could craft in my mind. But the question is, again, putting a value statement on that and waging them against each other is not helpful. When you're talking about it, uh, largely we need to talk about systemic and broader swaths of inequality and pointing to things that we legitimately want to solve. And making like the equation of it is good pragmatically, but uh, in in like a in like a higher form of of consideration and and extrapolating and and dissecting it. But when you try and put it into to action in advocacy towards somebody, often it's going to be unhelpful. And I don't think that that's really going to be really going to be what you want to accomplish. <clears throat> yeah. Helping women does not mean stop helping men. E uh, I it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um but that is kind of what Thought Slime is saying. Uh Thought Slime said, I mean, uh, on the outset that people who have everything are not going to want to give up to help those who don't. And that is kind of what what slime is saying, and I that's why I don't like this. It's bad. If hearing that makes you not want to be cool or chill, then probably you weren't going to be useful as an ally. Also, probably... Anybody can be useful as an ally. Discounting people for any reason I don't think is helpful. I think it's bad. You don't wipe your ass. There's a statistical likelihood that you don't wipe your asshole. This is the difference between Thought Slime and myself. I do not make videos disparaging broad swaths of people on the right. I don't. I don't. I can point to a behavior that I dislike. Uh, people believing in fascism or ethno-nationalism or race supremacy or anti-vaxxers. And I can disparage that concept. But these are beliefs that people are adopting and it's not intrinsic values of those people, all right? Uh, and I try very hard not to, like, disparage people's religion because that's not helpful either. Um, I don't think that anybody is beyond reason, and I don't think anybody can just be simply cast off because they're going to be unhelpful because that is not going to help you. It hurts you and what you're trying to achieve more. Um, and it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation. When I... 
discuss how much I dislike certain right-wing ideologies, I point to people that are pushing those ideologies. And I don't say, like... Like, I can say Tim Pool is an unintellectual baby brain who pushes harmful, hateful rhetoric. I do not say Tim Pool fans are baby brains with harmful, hateful rhetoric. Because if I say that, I will never get a Tim Pool fan to ever listen to a thing I say. Ever. And you say, well, why would you? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Somebody had patience for me and helped me understand. Why wouldn't I want to do that for them as well? It's little baby steps. Reactionaries will always be able to get a foothold in any group of people being made to grapple with the unfair power they benefit from. That's... The... I wish I could hold up a mirror right now. Telling people they're special. It's not unreasonable to discount people actively opposed to your goal as unhelpful to that goal. Agreed, which is why I disparage the people that are in charge and, and promote those types of ideas. But I don't, I don't attack the people that have bought into it because then I can't pull them out of it. You know, there are people, don't get me wrong, there are people that follow some of these hateful ideologies and they are lost causes. Sure, but I don't know them. I don't know them and I won't know them. Uh, but I do know the people that they're listening to and that they're, they're, they're learning from, you know. Special and deserve all the nice shit that they have. That's going to be an easier sell 10 times out of 10 than like saying, hey, maybe you should have less stuff and other people should have more. It just is. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, and that's true. So why not base your strategy around ways to talk them out of that or into a different lateral position? Like, it's very possible. I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a kind of boom-bust cycle in capitalist economies. I think I'm the first person to point that out. But in recent times, they've gotten all the booms to go to a handful of jerks, and the rest of us been doing nothing but busting. I don't know. I guess that's a... Is that a, is that a cum joke? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just gonna <clears throat> just gonna take another take of that. Uh, I would argue that thought slime discounts too many people. I, I that's my main that this is my main issue that I have with thought slime, and it's why I'm doing like a, a throwback to 2016 anti SJW rationalism type response video, is because this is the kind of thing that was around all the time in 2016. It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. It doesn't help. It hurts. It makes things worse. The, re the rest of us have been doing nothing but busting. Okay, but you know whose fault it is? It's the group of people that are trying to get their fair share. If they just shut up, you can have their share. That uh, no, that's not a thing. That's not what people believe. That's very strange. It's easy. It's easy to get people on board with that. They understand the value proposition there. It's other people's shit, right? So there's, there's a contingent that we're never going to get. All right. Okay, before we get into this, the these... When you're doing a deep analysis on this type of thing, you have to first look at it in, in the light of systems and systemic. That's the most important word, systemic. Um, and when you're doing these types of things, yes, you can, do, you can condemn some people lightly uh, who benefit overwhelmingly because of inequalities inside of systems. Sure, if they are actively participating in... Uh, in, in damage control and trying to push back against that inequality being fixed. I think that's fair. Like, if there is a massive inequality, say, between men and women in whatever context, and there are some men who are actively trying to make sure that that never gets fixed, sure. Fuck those guys. They're not good people. Condemn them. Disparage them. But doing it to all men is not helpful, and it's bad. And brush strokes of like, bah, it's because you're a man and you benefit, then you can't understand and you can't help and you're not an ally, is, is, it hurts what you're trying to do. Uh, do, do, do. Is it reasonable to expect a member of a marginalized community to engage in discourse specifically designed to hurt them as a person in good faith manner? Nobody can answer that question except that person. 
and I'm I'm not expecting anything of anybody, you know. Um, it, it really comes down to what each individual person has the the patience and the empathy and the energy to do so. I don't expect people to do anything. I'm just doing what I do and discussing why I think Thought Slime is harming their cause and my cause, because it's the same cause. Um, you know, it's just, yeah. Uh, Thought Slime, uh, the, I checked Thought Slime's Twitter does say any, any all, so I'm not being as careful. I, I guess it's okay. I'm trying to go by they just to be more more safe. Um yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. All right, we those there's there's some people that we're just not going to win over. Cuz we can't offer them anything better than having other people's shit. Cuz that rules just to have other people's shit. I would love to take shit from you. patreon.com/thoughtslime. But all uh, that's uh, people aren't that's a weird one. Whatever. I don't want to get stuck on this forever. Also, men, by definition, are adults. They're capable of understanding the consequences of their actions are and they? should be capable of understanding the point of view of other people. I believe enough in men to... It's a very disparaging way to say that. Sure. Broadly. Sure. Sure. But it's very arrogant. It's a very arrogant way to put it. But, Trust yeah. that most of them understand or could be made to understand the inherent dangers and cruelty of the patriarchy. Part of that understanding is going to be uncomfortable, but prioritizing male comfort over the safety of others isn't going to help. It's just going to reinforce those same problems and replicate them in the very spaces where we're meant to be figuring out how to stop them. Incorrect. 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 Here's an example. Here's a very, very simple example. I have a friend <clears throat> who is a, a bit less than lefty. And I wanted to have a conversation with them. Uh, and it was, and this, is a very, this is a very real story. And uh, it was specifically about sexism and basically gender inequalities and things like that. The easiest word that I could have used to describe what I thought was a central core problem that was happening was to use the term patriarchy. And it was, very, it was very apt. It was very appropriate. I don't think that term is always appropriate. No. Uh, but in this case, yes. And because I was aware of my friend's predilections, I did not use the word patriarchy. And instead, I modified my language ever so slightly. And I said the exact same thing, but I just avoided using the words that would very simply make him stop listening. I wanted to say trigger, and that's true. But I'll just say stop listening. I did one very brief that cost cost me no energy at all. It just took me self-awareness and a little bit of patience, and I modified what I said, and I was still saying exactly what I was saying, just making sure I was saying it in a way that wasn't going to get him to close his ears. And he heard every word I said, and he agreed. I did a good. And it cost me nothing. It cost me absolutely nothing. I just... it. <sighs> and how do we stop those problems? Simple. We unionize Hooters. We need to have a Hooters union. That way we can advocate to turn Hooters into anything that isn't Hooters. Like why that again like that's authoritarian if people want to have a hooters and they have people that are willing to work it you can say that maybe people being forced into working hooters is a symptom of an unchecked capitalism and without capitalism nobody would ever want to work at hooters or blah 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 but in a vacuum without any other external forces if somebody just simply wanted to work that job it's their right to work that job J just arbitrarily saying that hooters is a symptom of awfulness is ridiculous and it's the same puritanical kind of garbage of people that say that there shouldn't be strip clubs and are anti-sex work. Okay? I don't agree with that. I think it's weird. I don't know why you're fixated on hook on hooters. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't get it. Uh, <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. They aren't always able to see consequences of their beliefs without serious work. I agree. That's true. 
Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, adults as well. Adults as well um, can't always see the consequences of their actions. I mean, like, you can be 80 years old and just make a mistake. It, it, it is what it is. Um, it's like this, you're an adult now, and so you automatically should know and understand things better like I understand them. It's very pretentious. It's weird. Like, for example, we could let the waiters wear pants. If they wanted to wear pants, they could do that. We could hire male waiters and let them wear the little shorts if they want to. In my opinion, and I don't really get to have an opinion, I do not myself work at Hooters, but in my opinion, an important part of the Hooters union I am proposing should be to fundamentally fuck up the brand of Hooters, just make it confusing and uncomfortable for clientele and management alike, rather than for white staff like why 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 is thought slime just so upset about hooters is thought slime nick adams in disguise <laughs> maybe this is the long con <coughs> according to thought slime i am now a class trader and a counter-revolutionary well i don't give a fuck <laughs> whatever I don't know. Maybe we can make everybody wear sexy owl costumes. Make the customers wear sexy owl costumes. Nobody gets in without one. Prince Harry has never said foot in Are we Hooters. back on Nick Adams? Is this where we're going? Are we going to Andrew Tate or something? Because I want to know, like, just don't bring... I want to know about why we on the left cannot try and appeal to young dudes. And it shows. But okay, let's assume we need to offer men a little treat. We need to give men a special reason why they should hop on board with the not being assholes school of politics. Let us assume, for the sake of argument, that men are moral babies, incapable of understanding right and wrong. They are only motivated by pure self-interest, but also base their entire sense of self on what gender they are. Who? Who does any of that? I, I mean, if we're making a hypothetical, okay. I hope you don't then treat this hypothetical as, a, as an actual argument. I consider myself on the left. Yes, I do. Absolutely. I consider myself on the left. Um, I am a socialist. Uh, I believe in absolute uh, liberty, improvement of uh, material conditions. I believe in... Uh, Equality, I believe uh, medicine, housing, food, all should be a human right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so far left, I also believe that everyone should be armed. Arm minorities, arm the trans, arm everyone, and protect your local human beings. Anyway, yeah. Okay, that's what we're, that's our starting position. <laughs> Hey, have you ever noticed that the version of masculinity that guys like Adams promote is fucking miserable? Yeah, it is. That all of the little weirdos, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate, the fresh and fit ghouls, they all propose this type of manhood that is just completely joyless and empty. I will agree with Thought Slime on this 100%. Yes, this is something that I have thought about extensively. And yes, that what these people peddle is miserable. It is terrible life of conspicuous consumption for its own sake, where the things you're meant to conspicuously consume are seemingly chosen for their inability to ever, ever give you any material pleasure. <laughs> True. Uh, that was one of the vibe I was picking up from the Asking Billionaires Nicely thing. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. So um, it's something interesting. Chris Reagan was talking about it on TikTok recently. Um, how he remembers back in 2016, 2017, uh, he was getting emails from companies, groups, organizations uh, that were willing to offer him a lot of money if he was willing to take his political stances to the right and start making content that they were requesting. He said no. I too got those, and I too said no. And then there are people who were making kind of content around the same area-ish that took that, and their content went woo way over there. And we know that they took that money. We know that they took that money. It's because there is a massive, massive amount of money in uh, YouTube, grassroots, uh, right-wing political punditry. And we can see the effect that this has on society. Like, it's really crazy. Yes, that's exactly what happened, Brand Van Flakes. That is 100% what happened. 
That happened with Lauren Chen. That happened with Sargon. I, maybe even Jeremy. I don't know about Jeremy for sure. It, that Maybe he just grew his audience just through the organic dumb fuckery that he pronounces. I, I don't know. But like, yeah, 100%. That is the effect of money on YouTube discourse. That is the effect. And my God, what a nightmare it has created. It is so insane. Shouldn't you be advocating against asking billionaires nicely? Well, I'm not asking any billionaires at all. But if a billionaire was like, hey, man, uh, I, I, I really like that you're promoting these lefty ideas. I will uh, be a wealthy patron to you to encourage you to keep going and maybe help you pay for an editor or something like that. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, sweet. That'd be awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the, you can tell the people that didn't actually take the money uh, me, Derek, uh, Chris Reagan, um, Shu didn't, uh, and Skeptic didn't. Uh, there's a couple others. Basically, any of us that actually still talk to each other are the people that didn't take the money. <laughs> and the people that did take the money, we were like, we are done. So, yeah, that's why, that's how that whole thing happened. Yeah, it was crazy. I do have a price, though. Yes, I do have a price. I do have a price. I have stated that outright. I, I will not bend my positions and my, my feelings. Yeah, Hugo and Jake didn't bend either. I will, I will legit become a right-wing grifter for a $2 million yacht. I will do it. If somebody gives me a $2 million yacht today, I will become a total chud YouTuber for one year. But only one year. And only for a $2 million yacht. So, if for some reason, this is just, I'm just letting everybody know. If for some reason, all, all of a sudden you start seeing me making a bunch of right-wing content, you know I got a yacht, and just unsubscribe from me for a year, and then I'll be back, okay? I'll be back. Water I drink is sparkling water, because sparkling water is for rich people. Sparkling water you have to buy. <laughs> so, if you only drink sparkling water, you only drink rich man's water. But I don't like sparkling you don't like sparkling water? You don't like water? You scared of bubbles, you little bitch? Do you? <laughs> I've never heard that clip before, and that is so pathetic. Believe the accusations made against the top G, Andrew Tate? <laughs> Would that make me your token uh, person of color secretary? If I get a $2 million yacht, Katzen, you're coming with me. Just eat shitty wings and drink shitty domestic beer, and if you do anything else, you're some kind of preening lib. Alpha male New Year's resolutions. Dine at Hooters weekly. Drink only domestic beer. Absolutely no Fortnite. A life of domination and struggle where you are alone against the entire world, and the only people you can depend on as allies are so inferior to you that you should think of them as like unto property where bonds between people are impossible, and the only way two human beings can relate to one another is through the veiled or not-so-veiled threat of violence. Uh, mm, all the way up until the violence comment, I, I do agree with what thoughts I'm saying here. Like, the, these are terrible ideologies that, that inspire people to be the worst versions of themselves and to be unhappy. I agree. If you're incapable of violence, not being violent isn't a virtue. People who teach martial arts know this full well, right? If you learn a martial art, you learn to be dangerous, but simultaneously you learn to control it. Both of those come together. And the combination of that capacity for danger and the capacity for control is what brings about the virtue. Otherwise, you confuse weakness with, with moral virtue. A life of... Uh, okay. I don't see violence as an inherently masculine trait, and I don't think it should be. I think we can degenderify uh, the concept of violence, uh, and I think it's an important thing to do as well, because the, the, ex the exercise of physical power and prowess uh, should not be relegated to one gender or the other. I really like strong people, strong men, strong women. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, my my Instagram is is just full of, of gym bros and gym girls. I'm just like, Bleh. you know. So, like, I I I think that you can take something that is traditionally seen as masculine, and you can degenderify it. And I think that actually is a societal good when you do that. And I think there's ways to do it that will actually be attractive to people that are otherwise more predicated towards like misogyny. 
constant self-surveillance. Uh, sword lesbians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, they'll never be mine, but I can appreciate respectfully. For any sign of deviant thinking or any behavior which steps even slightly out of the narrow confines of the arbitrary, prescriptive signifiers of manhood that you have been assigned. Yeah, so teach a different type of manhood. That's, it's entirely possible. You're not a man if you like to eat salads or take too much care with your fingernails or feel the emotion of love. Oh God, Ian Miles Chong. A life dedicated exclusively to cultivating loneliness, hyperaggression, and a contempt for anything which might broaden your horizons. Mm -hmm. Each and every new experience, every new sensation, new idea, has the potential to have been placed there by someone trying to undermine you and steal your strength. Okay. An ever-present, ever-shifting, faceless enemy, always just out of sight, who has made it their life's mission to pervert and destroy you by making you think it's okay to hug your brother or some shit. That... Okay. Uh, there was a lot there. <laughs> I, when, when you're doing this type of analysis of, like, the hyper-masculinity and, like, the, 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 the terrible ways in which people like Jordan Peterson, Cobra Tate, blah, 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 all purport for masculinity, uh, I think it's important to address, like, their core beliefs and how miserable it makes people before you then look at their beliefs into, uh, who they blame for it. Because those are two different things. And I say that because there are plenty of people that do not buy into the hyper-masculine aesthetic nor belief, but they also still believe in gynocracy conspiracies. So I think it's important to address both of them, but not just lump them together. I don't think that's helpful. Because if you have somebody who is hyper-masculine and believes in this, this horrible, horrible ideology... But they don't necessarily buy into the idea that women are ruining everything. Or really, the end result of it is women, uh, the left, aka the Jews. It's always, it always goes that direction, if we're being honest. As long as they don't believe in that, but they are just stuck in this belief that that's how they should be as a man, you can teach them a new masculinity. One that is not evil. You can. You absolutely can. But if they believe in this giant conspiracy of what's trying to ruin you, you have to address that first. And that can also be a little bit more difficult. People are more willing to learn a new way to be better when the way that they're learning right now is awful than they are willing to learn that their core conspiracy is just bullshit. Okay? That that's like that's like Delilah cutting Samson's hair. It's gonna it's gonna destroy you. It's gonna take all your power away. You're not gonna be able to kill anybody with an ass's jawbone. The masculinity they propose is a prison, and I don't mean that allegorically. Like literally, it is a prison. Puffy. It's designed to keep you in place, to restrict your freedom, to keep you compliant, isolated, and withhold anything which makes life worth living at all. For example, hmm. not having to eat at Hooters. It's just, it's like, it's a mental prison and they want to put everyone in it instead of the physical prisons where they only want to put not white people in. See, and this is, an, this is another reason why I feel like this video is a big miss, regardless of the fact that I think Thought Slime is, is very wrong in a lot of this stuff. Basing this solely around Hooters is taking something that Thought Slime is talking about that's very real and very, very poignant and then bringing it back to Hooters, which the entire thing is Still, it's like basing it on a cartoon. I, it's very weird. Think about it. They want you to eat cheap, flavorless slop and not complain about it. They want you to be isolated and all of your interactions with other men to be jockeying for positions of power mm. so that you never work together to advocate for your collective rights. They want to enforce a culture of violence that serves both to control your behavior, like a prison guard, and to redirect your energy and passion away from attacking the oppressive system you find yourself within by pitting you against other people trapped within that system. Not unlike when they let prisoners go lift shit in the yard. Uh, that's weird. Um, okay. <laughs> that's weird. Because I, I will agree. Uh, the, the whole, like, male competition sort of thing. Well, competition is a very natural, uh, very primal uh, impulse that everybody has, but the way in which grifters will try and uh, coax people into embracing uh, that uh, is is yeah, it's it's very 
it's another means of control uh, and another means of like breaking down those people uh, into their own very m- m- mitigated sense of self worth. You know, so yeah. You know, let it, let them get it out of their system. Otherwise, they're going to beat us up. Your behavior is strictly controlled because it's assumed that left to your own devices, you're just inherently dangerous. You're a moral defective to be controlled. Deep down, you're an angry, violent brute. And the best you can ever hope for is to be able to direct that anger and violence in a positive direction because it's impossible for you to ever be better. Uh. It's just baked in. It's just who you are. And trying to change it is just going to make it worse. Any deviation from the... I don't... Okay. I Obviously, I... I... I understand what Slime is talking about here, but the thing is, that's very true for a lot of things. Like, a lot of things. And it's actually real. <laughs> like, it's it's taking the vulnerabilities of people that, that might have these these vibes, these feelings, uh, and, and basically blowing it up into a larger problem than it actually has to be. It's not really dealing with senses of self-awareness in which they can come to terms with their own, you know, negative impulses, negative uh, uh, stereotypes, predilections, viewpoints, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and overcoming them internally before they express themselves externally. Um, so it's very weird to make this... Uh, it's so strange. The expectations placed on you is immediately suspect, is immediately viewed as a subversive attack. Like how prison guards will read your mail, just in case, you know, just looking for any evidence you're plotting something. There can be no choice, no allowances for individuality, because the... I don't... No, that's weird. Whatever. Keep going. I, I, would, I would like to, for you to move on to the broader point, please. ...system can only ever work one way. Their way. Little by little, more of the world is taken from you until all that's left is lifeless concrete. Hard, unfeeling, immovable. Strong, maybe, but brittle. Easy to crack. And for all of these sacrifices, for shoving your life and personality, for shoving your entire humanity into this narrow little box, what do you get? It doesn't make you strong. You don't have the tools necessary to deal with emotional problems except through violence. That's weak. It doesn't make you independent. You're led around and told what you're allowed to do. That makes you submissive. And not in the fun way. And it doesn't... There's a lot of, there's a lot of assumptions being tossed around here on like the end result of this type of thing. Um, but sure, I, rather than try and argue against it, it's, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, isn't that, uh, Thought Slime's argument from earlier that some men can't change? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it, this is, we've gone a lot of different places in this. It's very strange. It doesn't make you happy, because, I mean, just fucking look at the guys telling you it will. They're all richer than you're ever gonna be, and they're miserable pricks. They're the saddest people on God's green earth. And here's the big one, you ready for this? It won't get you laid, because it's designed from the bottom up to make you repulsive to women. The whole grift- Mmm. There are some women that go for it. <laughs> I hate to say it, I wish it wasn't true. I wish it wasn't true. But there are some women that go for it. And that, in and of itself, whole nother video. And probably not one that I would make. But uh, someone who is much smarter than me and a woman uh, would probably have a lot more luck making. But, uh, yeah. Falls apart if you ever even talk to a woman. They have to make you just immune <coughs> to women being around you and in your life. Seriously, what do you get? What do you get for all of this? Like what? Well, you, think, you think women are trying to take men's power away? Buddy, I got news for you. Power you can only use how you're told to use? That's not power. I mean, weren't you advocating, like, taking power and giving... It's weird. Like, Thoughts I was talking about the redistribution of, like, societal power rather than just, like, resources and money. You know, it's weird. Power is being able to do the things you want to do and not giving a damn what people expect. Uh, that's one... Uh... Cry if you want to cry or don't. Watch romance movies if you want, or don't. But certainly don't eat at the gross titty restaurant to impress some internet dickhead. That is what strength is. That's being a man. I don't think that you're right either. <laughs> I don't think that... I, I don't... I don't think that you're any more right than they are. I'm sorry. I think you can take it from me. I'm pretty masculine. Put down the Fortnite. Pick up a Bible and a hacky sack. What? What do you mean? 
Is, is a hacky sack good to you? Isn't that a hippie thing? Every time I go to the butcher, Maybe I have to walk by the, the woke the coffee shop that attempted to put oat juice in my black coffee. The, the baristas may desperately want Nick Adams' alpha male to return, but I made it abundantly clear wow. that wait, would wait, wait, never wait. Is happen. there like... I just left the four butcher shop, and you wouldn't of... believe what I witnessed out front. Is there four or five minutes of outro stuff on this? Men who like feel the need to lie and misrepresent right themselves area. to the public are beta males. Hey, I'm um, calling about my test results. Uh-huh. Is that good? I see. Is it curable? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What do you mean, transition to the eyeball zone? What does that mean? Speak hey, English. Anyway, okay, it's just, it's just jokes. And then uh, I guess this is like... They like to wear little shorts. I'm an ally, shorts-wise. I'm a hero. My point here that I'm, I'm making in the absolute worst way I could is that I don't feel like, quote, Hooters girls, as they are called, are given sufficient agency within their workplace. Oh, I guess this is, uh, this is like the outro with some points. Let's try. Welcome to the eyeball zone. Here in the eyeball zone... <laughs> Think Hooters employees are sex workers. They exist in a liminal space between waiter and stripper that gives them all of the harassment of both. Oh, so this is, okay, this is what I want to hear. I want to hear how you make these arguments. Talked a lot about the Hooters Corporation and the demeaning shorts it makes people wear in this video. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I don't think Hooters employees are sex workers. They exist in a liminal space between waiter and stripper that gives them all of the harassment of both with... None of the protections you might not not expect, but like hope for. But don't get uh, this is okay. No, like no, no. I I know. <laughs> you cannot use an argument along the same lines as talking about sex workers and then say, but they're not sex workers. But I use that argument about them as if they're sex workers, but they're not sex. I'm, dude, come on. I, and regardless, regardless, it's still disparaging like whether or not people choose to use that, that means for their labor. It's not really addressing what might be the root cause of something that they might not like. And just saying all bad because all bad because I don't like it. Get me wrong. I'm very much in favor of any kind of sex work when and if that sex work benefits the sex worker. How do you know? I believe that waiters and sex workers alike should get to decide if they like to wear little shorts. I'm an ally. Short. Uh, if you don't want to wear little shorts, don't work at fucking Hooters. I don't understand. It would be like this is this is so this is so weird. It'd be like, okay, well I wanna be a stripper, but I don't want to take my clothes off. No, this is masking a grievance that you have because this is what you're basing your entire argument on. This is so unintelligent. This is so crazy. No, Thought Slime has never been to a Hooters. I've never been to a Hooters. But I have at least, I at least like understand what Hooters is, you know? It's wise. I'm a hero. My point here that I'm, I'm making in the absolute worst way I could is that I don't feel like, quote, Hooters girls, as they are called, are given sufficient agency within their workplace. That's what Ding Dongs like about it. That How do you know? Why do you not know if they have agency in their workplace? It's also why they get so fucking bent out of shape about OnlyFans, a website where people can go to sell sexual material on their own terms, and also, in theory, other things. But, like, fucking... why? Working on OnlyFans... All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So anyway, uh, let's pull it back, and let's talk about this. Okay. <clears throat> the central core idea that ThoughtSlime was trying to work with on this was talking about whether or not the left should reach out and embrace men and can the left embrace topics that might be relevant to men and young boys and so that they might be more adhering to lefty ideals and be less vulnerable to right-wing grifts and grifters 
Thought Slime did not, in any shape or form, make a cogent argument for or against, and I'm assuming is against, because of this broad mishmash, this, frankly, car crash of a video that went absolutely nowhere and only had the one coherent point that right-wing men's advice is terrible, which, yes, it is. It super is. But also that we shouldn't try and get men on board because it, it, it was not, this is not a good video. It was not a good video. This is my suggestion. It all comes down to context. When you are trying to be a persuasive speaker, when you are trying to convince somebody into thinking the way you think, or at least embracing something that you find is important, it's important to, it's important to, to put it in context that they will understand. It's important to put it into ways in which they themselves can grasp onto it and develop naturally from there. Teaching archaic ways in which to think about masculinity, uh, be stoic and cast off feelings, no feely, no cry, anger, 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 manly, manly, is atrocious. And it's very easy to convince somebody out of it if you show them a degree of strength that they might be more willing to embrace. What is more masculine? Being a dopey dick who never talks to anybody and is always sad and angry and pissed off and has to treat people like crap to maybe, hopefully, get their dick wet? Or is it to embrace a type of nobility masculinity? Like, for instance, what's more fucking manly and based than here's some people, they are, they are fucking oppressed. They have shit bad, and if you use your power because you're powerful or at least have the capacity for power help them which is more attractive you feeling noble and 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 embracing this type of like control and power to lift lift up people that need you or to be a miserable douche there is a way in which to craft leftist ideals into a sense of left, progressive, humanistic ideals. There is a way to do it. The way you don't do it is this. This is not how you do it. This is going to make more people pissed off and flee from it. This is the same thing that was going on in 2016, is when just saying things in such abrupt and cruel and weird and cold terms is going to take people that are very impressionable and make them not want to listen to you. This video will create an Andrew Tate fan more than it will save one. That's just how it is. So on the very basis of this, this hurts, it does not help. And that, that is my, my, my summation of this incredibly long video that I had to record. <sighs> Have a wonderful day.